welcome to our Biz Huddle podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Cuthbert, Creative Director at Baker Creative. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit subscribe so you can get notified when new content comes out. Please share this with anyone who could be inspired by it. Just make sure that I'm connecting with folks because you never know who's going to help you, who you're going to need, that type of thing. Hi, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us on our podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Me too. (laughs) So you work at IBM. So tell people what you do. Um, Well, so I work on this amazing platform called the mainframe. We now call it IBM Z. And so I always ask people, do you think you've touched a mainframe today? So Michelle, do you think you've touched a mainframe today? I'm going to say probably. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't trick you, but I do trick a lot of people. So if you go to an ATM, if you use your credit card, if you book a flight, if you do online purchases, you are really touching the mainframe. Um, So, you know, we are that little thing in the back that people don't think about. Um, So that's the platform that I've worked on for over 37 years now, long time. And I love it. I've had a ton of different jobs and um, mostly in development, but now I'm in the support organization. So think about Black Friday or Cyber Monday and a bank, uh, one of their applications. So credit card validation is down. That application is down. That's really bad. So the bank engages IBM and that would be my team. And they said, uh, we need this problem fixed now. In fact, we didn't want the problem in the first place, but that's a different part of the process. Um, But how are you going to fix it? And so the team will uh, work with the client and bring it up as quickly as we can. And uh, hopefully we don't have many of those. And off we run. So yeah, I work on a a platform that literally runs the world's economy. So that is so cool. (laughs) That's cool. That's cool. cool. Yeah, way cool. So with all the AI talk out there, right? I mean, there's yep. so many different tools and softwares and it's easy for people to get overwhelmed. Can you shed some light on how IBM Watson is a little bit different than everything else out there? Okay. Um, so w- w- you can read about IBM's Watson technology and stuff like that. So I'm going to change your question a little bit and talk about it from a Z perspective, if that's okay. Oh, great. So- yeah. Okay. So Z is responsible for, we we pride ourselves in security and reliability, uh, availability. Z actually stands for zero downtime. Um, and we have seven nines availability. So think of like a minute, a year, maybe. Right. So the systems are up. The systems are up, right? Because you want your credit cards to work. You want banks to be working. You want government agencies to be at the ready. So we actually, in the latest um, Z machine, we have a Telem processor that has infused AI. And one of the big things that I love about this is it is a quantum safe encryption technology. So within our Z machines, think about it as quantum computing comes out, which I think, you know, if you ask me about what do I, if I had another 50 years to work, uh, what would I go jump into? It would be quantum computing, like amazing, like amazing, amazing. Um, But quantum computing is going to be able to break a lot of the current encryption technology that's out there. And so being able to modernize your platform to be able to handle um, some of the the AI and the the new um, processing out there is, is really important. So. So that's what we do. That's that's super cool. So (laughs) so then how in the world did you get involved in this? I mean, this is, you know. I know. Isn't that funny? So I will blame my dad or or my mom, but no, it actually was my dad. Um, so I'm pretty old and uh I won't tell you what year I was born, but uh, some people, maybe some of the people will figure it out. And my dad kind of grew up as System 360. So that was IBM's big bet, the first mainframe computer as that was coming up. And so when I was going to college, I was like, dad, I don't know what I want to do. And he's like, go into computers, Maria, go into computers. That is what's going to be cool. And I was like, okay, dad, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I did. 
Um, I'm a, an electrical engineer and a computer science engineer. I love ones and zeros. Um, that's my thing. And uh, so I guess the rest is history. I was an assembler programmer. That's how I actually started in IBM. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So there's a lot of women, you know, looking at tech today. And what kind of advice would you offer to, you know, people wanting to get in the field or have that as a career? Yeah, that's a it's a great question. I get asked it all the time. So I'm going to tell you the three things that I tell my kids and they never listen to, but um, I tell everybody now, and I even try to tell myself every once in a while. So um, the first thing is your network, your network, your network, your network. And in fact, that's how I met you, remember? Yeah. Um, I work on my network. So I go out there and every time I meet interesting people, I connect with them on LinkedIn. Actually, last uh, two nights ago now, I was at an Athena award ceremony. Amazing group of women. I have connected to all of them on LinkedIn and I try all the time to go out there and just make sure that I'm connecting with folks because you never know who's going to help you, who you're going to need, that type of thing. And I would suggest um, find a way that connecting works for you. So I love milestones. I love anniversaries, birth of a child, sporting events. So I'm a big UConn fan. So I love basketball, but anything like that. And then once I find out about that, I I'm not that you know innovative. I have a calendar and on my, oh, it's an electronic calendar on my calendar. I list all these anniversaries and birthdays and little tidbits. And um, so once, twice a year, I'll reach out to people and just say, Hey, how cool is that? You know, I, I remember your daughter when she was one, she must be like six now, like what's going on in your world. And so, you know, it's just a way to reach out and say hello to people and it's amazing how that kind of connection keeps going. So that's one, your network. And it is, it's it's effort. It's not something that you can just like, you're a, an interesting person. And so, you know, people just have it. You, you really do have to work at it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And the second thing is never stop learning. So I love when, um, you know, I get to speak to young people or new hires that come into IBM and they think, oh, you know, I've graduated now. I'm like, yeah, well, you're not done. <laughs> Technology changes so fast. The world is changing so quickly. There is so much out there. So um, be curious about things. And so never stop learning. Always, always, always. And it, and it doesn't have to be about technology, right? You can go out there. Um, I know my boss, he loves music. So he's out there, you know, learning about music history and things like that. And so it's just fun to go out there and have a hobby or or learn about different things. And then the the third thing I would say is you have to love what you do. Have fun. Um, don't take yourself too seriously and um, learn from your mistakes. So, yeah. So those are my three things. Network, work on it. Uh, keep learning. Never, you know, lifelong learner. And then have fun. Those are my three things. So you, I'm sure with your networking, you come across a lot of other women entrepreneurs. And even in the Tuck program that, you know, you and I, thank you for that. <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. We had a great time and love to have mm -hmm. round two would be fantastic. And, you know, what kind of mistakes do you see some women mm -hmm. entrepreneurs make? Especially women. Uh, so confidence, be fearless, go out there. And, and there's there are many books, lean in all these different types of things about, you know, be confident about yourself and just go try things. Um, I I'm a, I'm a great, I'll go out there and try anything once or twice, once or twice. Um, and I just didn't learn. I enjoy meeting new people, trying it. And one thing I will say, this is, and I know we had this conversation. I am an introvert. I may come across not like that, but I really would love to just sit down with a book and read some nerdy thing and go program over in a corner and, you know, shut my door and be with my computer. Um, but when I would go into a meeting, right. And I'd be sitting at the table or I would sit back. So I will tell you, go into a room and sit at the table, like have a seat at the table virtually and literally. And then I would just sit there and I would listen, absorb things. And I wouldn't ask a question. And 
part of that was I was shy. Part of it is I was think, oh, the other people in the room are smarter than I am. My question's going to, you know, come across as not not the greatest. And so I challenge myself, even to this day, um, I'll be sitting in, you know, a room with executives and I'm nervous as heck. I will think about what is that one question I'm going to walk into that room and that's going to be my my question to ask. And so I think it's important to have a voice and don't don't let the moment go by and 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 be nervous about that. Um, and one other thing I'll tell you too, um, as an introvert, if if this is uh, some of your other viewers, for me, when I go to a conference or an event, it is so easy. Like. I'll go walk the city by myself or I'll go sit up in my room and say, oh, I have a lot of work to do. So I'm just going to order room service. I force myself to get out of that room and go down and at least meet. I try to meet at least three people and, you you know, pick whatever number is good for you. But if you take the time to walk up to somebody and not everybody will be friendly, but that's OK. There's there are other people. It is amazing the different individuals. I, I remember your cohort amazing group of women. I never would have had that experience if you just don't get out there and and just try. Yeah, I did notice that the cohort was very supportive of each other and we're still talking to each other even now. That's so awesome. we're going to meet at other things and, and share information. And, you know, that's the thing. It's about that connection. And when you run your own business, you feel like, oh my God, I'm by myself trying to figure all this out. Sometimes it's just not. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And you just don't realize that, you know, my question was the same as 10 other people in the room. And then it was like, oh, then it's that, you know, that connection that you have. Right. So I saw women. So am I allowed to ask you a question? Oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> So do you find it, so I, I work with a bunch of engineers, nerds, and so we all like to talk that kind of talk. Do you find it difficult or challenging to have people in different fields and you're trying to connect with them and, and have that conversation? Is that challenging? Well, it was, okay. So I was in the 10,000 Small Business Goldman Sachs program and they partnered me with, and it's a good program, but they partnered me with, with someone who was in the pet industry. So I could help her, but she didn't understand anything I did. So then it was like this. <laughs> so it was like, oh, well, you know, it was kind of this one sided, you mm -hmm. know, you're happy to help someone, but you couldn't really bounce anything off of this person because they just couldn't understand it. And mm -hmm. if I talk in tech, like I just gave a speech to a convention yesterday about AI and, and, and I know, right. So I was like, man, you know, you don't realize how much people don't really grasp this yet. And I think people will catch up pretty quick, but sometimes it's hard to have conversations. So, you know, I always think of what's the main, what's the main thread that everyone can connect to emotions, uh, right. experiences, and how do I speak to that? And how do I frame that in their world? And how can I connect to them on where they're at? That's where I try to go. No, that's awesome. That's great <laughs> advice. See that? <laughs> So I know that you've been in the business for a while, mm -hmm. but was there any like lessons learned at work that you were like, yeah, you know what I mean? That you could share that would be useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the biggest one um, that comes to mind is I was put in a penalty box once. So I had a presentation to give. And it was just numbers. So I was responsible for the quality across um, the enterprise. I put the numbers on the chart and I got up at the kickoff meeting at the beginning of the year and I presented what I thought were facts. To me, it was the facts. But I was representing other people's data, albeit it was facts. But there's always a way that you can position information and numbers. And so um, there was one gentleman who was very concerned with the way I had presented his data. So one of the things that, yeah, um, so penalty box, Marie went into the little penalty box uh, for a couple of years, actually. Oh. And that, yeah, well, that's OK. I mean, oh. you, you learn from these experiences, right? I will never do that again. And so you learn how, when you're going to be presenting information, who are the people ahead of that presentation that really need to understand? If you're going to have a decision made, who are the people that you're going to have in as allies in that meeting to help 
and you need to educate them so that they understand your position and you understand theirs, right? So um, that was a big learning experience for me and and it, it came out happy, right? I, I learned a great deal from that. Two individuals that really were my allies through this and they they actually worked with the gentleman who I had offended and um, made sure that he understood where I was coming from. And it took a while. And then they coached me. And so I have to tell you, having those types of um, allies and people who will give you candid feedback is really, really important. Um, so anyway. I totally agree with that. It's just hard, you know, sometimes and you're just like, I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah, that, It was just data. Well, I, it was just data. Yeah. So yeah. I know that you've had a very successful career and you have kids. Can you give any advice on the work-life balance? Yeah. Wow. Um, I have two children. <laughs> I'm going to be careful with this. Um, I have two daughters. Um, they are now, wow, um, 27 and 25. 27, 25. So it's been a while. I have to tell you, I am very fortunate. I have a great support network here at IBM. There were lots of role models, women who were very supportive. I think IBM as a company um, was really supportive of flexibility and allowing me to, you know, uh, have my hours adjusted if I needed it. I don't know how many times like I was on a soccer field with my computer in the car and watching the kids on the on the field. So you you try to balance all those things. Um, my husband is amazing. Uh, let's put a plug in there <laughs> for him. So I think having that support network and that group of people that can really help. And I um so quick story. My daughter lives about an hour north of here and she um actually moved in 4 miles from a a friend of ours. Um she she actually was my office mate here at work for a long time and now the two of them go on walks together and she is coaching my daughter in her she's a physical therapist in her new role. And so it's interesting how this ecosystem of people in your network and I will tell you, I I bring my daughters to a lot of things and now they pull me into things. So one of the things my older daughter really loves is the science fairs, the local science fairs. So now we're judges. Uh, I'm not part of SWE, but um, we go and we partner with SWE and we're judges at the local, local science fairs. I love that with her. Um, my younger daughter, um, she has been a, a substitute teacher with me. And when I can't make, I'm off on business trips. She'll be at our local church. So we um, we teach sixth grade. So um, it's just it's just fun when you can pull your as they get older, right? As they get older and and you can they're like little little adults. You can have some fun with them. And now they're big adults. Unbelievable. So now I can do more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing I will say, and I, I say this to a lot of, um, especially women that I mentor here at IBM, is don't have any regrets. I never missed, I told you, uh, milestones are big for me. I never missed a birthday, ever, ever. And I did miss one Christmas concert, you know, the school Christmas concerts where they're not that good anyway, but but. Um, I did miss, but it was recorded. And then I sat down um, with my daughter afterwards and, and we listened to it together. So I think those moments are really important and you don't want to look back and have regrets. So be really careful as you're going through. It's it's tough to balance both things and you get pulled in multiple directions and just have your priorities straight. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to do that when people are overwhelmed. It is. Yeah. And and especially if you're running your own business, mm -hmm. right? This is your livelihood, right? Um, if I miss a day of work, okay, I, I get caught up. But I mean, you have real, real issues. Yeah. <laughs> so when it's all said and done, what kind of legacy would you like to leave? It could be personally, it could be professionally, either way. Mm -hmm. Um, so you kind of saw it at the, at the event. So family, 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 for me, it is always about family and hmm, you're going to make me cry. I, oh, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I, you know, I'm an emotional person too. 
So I will tell you um, a, a little story. I'll, I'll do a little story. So I came home from a, a colleague of mine. I came home from a funeral and I said, oh, the casket, you know, I, I gave my respects. And in the casket, they had um, tokens that people had left that they thought would just be nice for the person. And so I asked my daughters, I said, so what would you put in my casket? You know what they said? No. My laptop. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. How old so, were they? Um, they were teenagers at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was hard. That was hard for me. So what I realized was I need to change that. I need to the computer. There's a time for the computer and my work, and the, and they respect that. But there's also a time when I put that away. So what I would like is that my legacy would be that I really put family first. Mm. That's hard. Yeah. It, 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 it is hard. It is hard, especially when we're so well connected, we right. can just so quickly like, Oh yeah. Just at the dinner table. Nope, 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 no. I don't do that. Me too. I don't, I don't do it either. Cause I'm like, you get them started when they're young and you can't stop it. It's hard. That is really hard. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess the only other thing is um, I I love technology. I love math, science, computers, that kind of stuff. And I don't know how we can continue to encourage um, young women to be excited about STEM. Mm -hmm. So I I will continue as often as I can to encourage young women that, you know, math and science is cool. It is cool. It's fun. It it's super cool if you really look at it. I mean... So many advances just in the past five years is just mind blowing. And yeah. even in my industry, how different it's changed. I mean, there's a lot of changes everywhere. And so that's why I think often people take tech for granted, right? Because they just, the phone is magic and they just, it just shows up and a computer just shows up, but it really doesn't. Right. No All right. Anything. So I have a question for you. Okay. How do you shut down? So for me, I'm in the office, right? Mm -hmm. So I I do get back on when I go home, but there's a, a drive home so I can decompress and I can change and there's a drive in. So how do you kind of shut down and, and kind of segment your day? Sometimes it's hard because in my, you know, with marketing and HR, that's not, there's really no off switch, right? It's 24 seven, all holidays, you're watching, paying attention and listening. So you have to, I make a point at a certain times I will check in, but I can't allow it to take over the whole day because then I would have no time for that balance. Right. And then, huh? and then before my kid gets up, I, that's my time to meditate or work out or just try to, or I might do something I want to do strategic and I just need that quiet. Right. So that's kind of what it. I do. <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's I love my, it timing because then sometimes when it's quiet is when you can hear yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Oh, I, so another little fun fact, I have something called a treadmill file. So I can't read when I'm running on a treadmill, but I can watch videos and stuff like that. And so education, we have a lot of video to education at IBM. So my, I have my little treadmill fire whenever anybody sends me something and then you can exercise and, you know, do something else at the same time. So. Absolutely. I have a happy file when you have the crappy day. <laughs> I have all these comedians and all these like snippets I can just play. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Because then you can be like, cause you know, they say for every negative, you have to have seven positives. Yeah. So if you just kind of take five minutes just to take a break, break and just binge watch just a whole bunch of funny stuff, you feel better. I love that. <laughs> no, I'm going to steal that. I love All right. That. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah, because if you just just take a moment for yourself, because I think what happens is so much email. Oh, my God, so much email in five minutes. And then, you know, there's calls coming in and this and that. And you're just like, ah. I know it's hard to have boundaries because sometimes when you're trying to get everything done and you want to do so well for your client, or, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot. And if you don't, you know, and they say about the plane, if you don't breathe your own oxygen first, how are you going to do the rest? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true.
I think the other thing that we do, and I, I will say more women, I think, but I, I will say for sure, I see there are jobs that are you need to have an A plus on. Mm -hmm. Then there are jobs that it's okay to get a B. I have a very hard time doing B work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. But but we need to learn that it's okay to have B work it's for hard. the right thing. For the right uh, thing. <laughs> right, for the right thing. Because you don't want to be like, right. <laughs> you're making a cake and half of it's iced. Eh, not so much. <laughs> right? But I mean, if something's right. not that important, it's hard when you're, the expectations are so high when you're, and you know this, when you're a certain level, that expectation mm -hmm. is you have to know everything. You have to have the answers for it all. And it has to be perfect. Yeah. And that's an, an impossible standard. It is. And yet we hold ourselves to that sometimes. Nobody else is holding us to it, but we hold ourselves to it. Yeah. And that makes it hard because it's like, you make one little mistake. It's like, oh, how did I not know that email didn't go through? And it's like, Cause you don't know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was really great talking to you. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit subscribe so you can get notified when new content comes out. Please share this with anyone who could be inspired by it and feel free to post any questions so we can be inspired by new content. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in learning more, visit our website at bakercreative.co.